If black holes have a temperature, this means that black holes radiate. In the previous part of this 2007 International Physics Olympiad problem, we've derived an expression, an expression, an expression for the Hawking temperature of a black hole. We've also looked at the dimensional analysis that has enabled us to find an expression for sigma, which is just a constant, and A, which is the area of the event horizon, the boundary, the edge of the black hole. Now, let's see if we can find out how does that loss of energy over time affect the mass of the black hole? How exactly is it losing mass? Can we find a differential equation for the loss of mass of the black hole? If you're interested in how to solve this equation, check out Just Calculus's channel. Additionally, have a browse for their channel. This video is part of our collaboration and it's truly a fantastic place to learn calculus. So strongly recommend that. Okay, well, let's have a look at this equation. Now, this equation will seem familiar to you. This is the good old Stefan Boltzmann's law for the radiation being emitted out of a object with a certain temperature. So, if the black hole has a temperature given by this expression, we can actually work out the power that's been given off by this black hole. Well, remember, power is just the time derivative of the energy. And what we can do is we can substitute all the expressions that we found out in the previous part of the question and see whether we can find uh, the rate of change of energy of the black hole. So let's just carefully substitute those. So we're going to have minus sigma. Now minus sigma is going to give us minus kb Boltzmann's constant raised to the power of 4. Then we're going to be dividing that by c squared h to the power of 3. Now let's... Um, take this expression and raise that to a power of 4. So we're going to get c cubed raised to a power of 4. So it's going to give us c, the speed of light, raised to a power of 12, h to the power of 4. Then we're going to be dividing that by 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. And then we have the gravitational constant g raised to the power of 4, Boltzmann's constant kb raised to the power of 4, the mass of the black hole once again raised to the power of 4, and this here is our Hawking temperature all raised to the power of 4. Finally let's plug in a, so a will be m squared g squared all over c raised to the power of 4. Now I can do one of my favorite things in physics and calculus and that will be to be cancelling terms out of an equation. We can see that kb to the power of 4, kb to the power of 4, so this here can be gone, so kb to the power of 4. Now let's have a look at the term of uh, the speed of light c. So here we have c squared, so here we have c to the power of 4, together they're going to give us c to the power of 6. Uh, which means that those are going to cancel and that's going to leave us a term of c to the power of 6 up here. Now we have h cubed and this means that we can cancel out this term here which is just going to leave us an h. Uh, we have a factor of g squared here which uh, will leave a g squared here. We have m squared which uh, we can cancel, that's going to leave us a power of 2. We've done so much cancellations. So let's see whether we can um, just uh, write down what's left from our expression. So we have dE by dt, dE by dt is going to equal, so let's not forget the minus sign. So c, the speed of light, raised to the power of 6, then we have a factor of h. Now, just underneath here, we have a factor of 16. We're left with a factor of g squared. And what else do we have? We have a factor of m squared over here. Okay, well, here we have an expression for the rate of change of the energy of the black hole. It's time to use probably one of the most famous equations from physics and namely that E is equal to mc squared. Now here we don't quite have E, we have just a little bit of energy dE. Now this a little bit of energy was caused by just a little bit of mass 
dm. So rather than let's say e is equal to mc squared, I'm going to use that if we're talking about infinitesimal values here, de will be equal to dm c squared. So if you were to differentiate that with respect to time, c squared is the speed of light, which is just a constant, so I can just take that outside of the derivative. What I'm be left with is c squared, and um, then I'm going to have dm by dt. Look at that, I'm already getting a differential equation with respect to the rate of change of mass, and uh, this will be equal to minus c to the power of 6 h over 16 g squared, and then I have a factor of m squared. Now all we need to do is just, um, um, just cancel out those factors of c, so c squared is going to move up here, which uh, means that this will get cancelled out, and this one here will turn to the power of 4. And there we have it, we have an expression for the rate of change of mass of a black hole via Hawking radiation. Think about this, this differential equation is telling us how much mass the black hole is actually losing per second. Now, if you guys are interested in solving this differential equation, and realistically you should be because it's just so interesting, check out just Calculus's channel and uh, over there I'm going to be solving this differential equation and we're going to find out the evaporation time of a black hole.